supposed to be the radio station supposed to be up and live like in June or July I think he said radio station radio station mm -hmm. so we're gonna be going on radio 74 here in local AM Bozeman FM, or? FM 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 so you don't have to scare people with my yeah looks exactly <laughs> just got your radio voice coming across Ben perfect yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the voice, voice in the you. dark. <laughs> I've got to have at least one person with a radio voice. So, But uh, we have the good Dr. Paul with us this morning, folks. By the way, welcome. Welcome to the live Sabbath School program this morning. My name is Kerry. We have the good Dr. Paul with us. We have Ben uh, Wilmot, and we have Ricky. <laughs> You guys know Ricky. Yeah. Ricky's back with us. He was gone <laughs> last time. <laughs> Yay! Well, one word to describe Ricky. Put it on the put it on the uh, the uh, the comments there in case somebody pops in and says hi. We'll say hi to him real quick. No, nope. you got to scroll scroll through the the little bar at the bottom. Mm. No, yeah, there you go. There they are. See them? Yeah. The little thing that looks like a comment. Oh, that. Yep, she tried them all. She got it now. All right. <laughs> so anyways, welcome, folks. Um, and we have uh, Ben's going to be the other Ben's going to be joining us too. Uh, ben doctor. Oh, he'll be here in a little bit. Oh, he just cool. texted me and said he'll be late. Oh, okay. he is a doctor. No, he's just that's oh, his last name. Uh, ben doctor. Well, that's how I finally remembered his name is is Framo was <coughs> calling him Ben doctor. And, and so I then started calling him Dr. Ben because I thought he was a doctor. And he's like, no, that's his name. <laughs> so what's Serena's last name? Wickham. Hang on. <laughs> Wick yeah. I would have got it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, my wife, Lisa, is back there in the, in the background. Watchman says, hello, good morning. Many, hey, Watchman. <laughs> many things taking place this past week. It seems like things are moving by the hour. Yes, it does. Things are wrapping up fast, aren't they? The yes, Lord's yeah. coming is soon. Hallelujah. Amen. We all get to meet. Amen. We don't know what Watchman looks like, so he's going to probably surprise us when we... Uh, when we are are brought up into heaven on 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 the final on the last so day. So when are we going to have Watchmen on the show? Well, it'd be nice to have him on the show. Well, he's kind of on the show every Sabbath now. Yeah, that's true. So it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it we we nice. won't see him with his earthly body, though. <laughs> well, but he'll we'll see him with he'll have recognizable traits. We'll all have recognizable traits about us. You know, I'll probably still have this beautiful red beard without the gray. No, I'm just kidding. And. Uh, <laughs> No, red redheads have the worst skin out there. So, but in heaven we're gonna have great skin. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. For as old as you are, you don't look that old. Yeah, well, I mean, back <laughs> of my neck, I am the definition of red neck. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, enough of that. We better get on with the lesson, huh, Paul? Yeah, <laughs> why not? All right. Yeah. Well, happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Let's start with a little bit of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for another Sabbath day to study your word. We ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Surround this building with your angels. Keep Satan away and help us to uh, learn something that we can share with others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And uh, right before we went to prayer, I saw Susan's with us this morning. Praise God. Susan, yes. Susan, we've been praying for you. We really have. And we just hope that all is well. And Susan's been a blessing. We've been keeping in touch. And uh, she's been helping me. And I... I hope I've been helping her. It's it's awesome. Praise that, the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to be there one for another. Mm -hmm. This wow. is that's that unity. I appreciate you, Susan. <laughs> that's I that do. unity that that's spoken of in in, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So important. Cool. All right. Well, let's get into the lesson. This is um, dun, dun, dun. lesson two in our quarterly uh, on the Great Controversy. Uh, everybody knows what the Great Controversy is, right? Yeah. We're living it, right? Yeah, we're living it, yeah. <laughs> it's not a dream, but <laughs> it's a nightmare sometimes. The central issue, love or selfishness, for the title on Lesson 2. Let's start out with our memory tech, as usual. So who wants to read that for us? Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will help I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay, and that's out of Isaiah. And uh, there's a uh, one-liner down here. Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another. And it's talking about the uh, destruction of Jerusalem. Upon another that shall not be thrown down. And that's out of Matthew 24, 2. 
why in the world did um, Israel, they had it so good and yet they fell away? Because I think their heart was in the wrong place. I think their heart was set on this earth. I think their heart was set on the temple. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Which I don't think that was a bad thing, but they they focused on having their kingdom here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that easy to happen? Yeah, of course. Yeah. All you have to do is reject truth. Well, <laughs> and just not even that, though. I mean... With our houses, with our motor homes, with, you know, anything that keeps us bound to this earth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I always think about it. It's like I know so many people who save up for their retirement. You know, they save, they save the 401, 2K and all that other stuff. And then, but they're bankrupt when it comes to saving for heaven. Mm -hmm. Not getting ready. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're. They're spending all their money, all their effort, all their time for this brief time that we're here. And they're, they're giving up eternity. It's mm -hmm. insanity. So what they were doing back there, relatively speaking, is what we're doing now. Yeah. Satan doesn't change his game plan that much, does he? No. He's more sophisticated in it, and that's about it. But yeah, the basics are still there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, in the destruction of Jerusalem, we discover a foreshadowing of Satan's strategy both to deceive and destroy God's people at the end of time. So this is us and is usable, mm -hmm. you know, and making sure that uh, we don't get involved with Satan. We can sidestep him and know uh, what he's doing uh, because uh, it's happened in the past. Nothing's new with, with Satan. He's got a game plan. He's going to use it all the way to the end. And he doubles down his forces here in the end mm -hmm. because he knows he has a short time. Yeah. And... I, I don't know. I, I believe that we all have to probably go through the Job experience and, and you know, Satan saying, ha, I could get Ricky to curse you to your face. You know what I mean? Let me have him. Let me have him. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and God allows it. We were just talking about it. And through that, God is refining us, you know, but we have to keep our eyes on Jesus because it's so easy to, to focus on me mm -hmm. and feel sorry for me. You know what I mean? Amen, amen. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, with, with, with differences of, of, you know, slight differences of how we believe about different things, you know. I know uh, with our discuss discussions with Jeff, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, there, there's some, not a lot, I shouldn't say, I use, shouldn't use the word a lot. We have some differences. On and we how, have differences. On, on, on the way we believe and stuff. And, and, but the important thing is, is to, um, uh, is to up to uphold the other person and exactly. respect and respect where they're at. Amen. You know, Amen. It's okay to have a discussion. I mean, that's what we do every week, right? Yeah. I think and we it's don't required. all see to eye to eye, just we like don't. you said. Me and you, in a lot of things, well, we're still brothers, right? That's right. We're brothers in Christ. <laughs> yeah. And and as long as we keep studying in the Word and we keep praying, we keep being humble. God's going to lead us. He's yep. leading us. Yep. My yep. my stubborn head is 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 not always going to. Just be stuck on duh, like constantly. You were going to say something. Well, it, it takes many parts of, of the body to make a body. We all can't be the eyes. We all can't be the ears. We all can't be the fingers, you know. Uh, but the sum of the whole is what God's looking for. You know, the the, the fingers can teach the yeah. the, the mouth. The, the, the ears can teach the mouth to... Yeah, Speak yeah, right all, all of the different body parts, they yeah. all work together in concert. Yeah. That's when things work well. Um, Watchman says, the doctrines divide. Every denomination thinks that they are the one. Now, that's not a bad thing. That Come on in, Ben. Grab a chair. And uh, we're going to have him on the auxiliary mic today. Make sure you turn his mic on. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get Ben the microphone. Whoops. Uh, Oh, Lisa, make sure it's on this time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> check, check, check. Uh, but the doctrines divide, uh, and um, I, I think that's a good thing in some respects mm -hmm. because it's going to divide the true from the false. Now, that almost sounds um, a little um, boastful, maybe. Uh, well, I, uh, we should... 
study from the scriptures and test all things through the scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. Which, what are correct. And we just don't take a line and say, ah, aha. You know what I mean? We take it all in the fullness, all the lines and say, oh, comparing scripture with scripture, right? Right. Right. Line by line, precept by precept. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. and and comparing them and lining them up. Because just say, for instance, when, uh, when, uh, Abraham, they said that, or who was it that went to hell? It it was a proverb, and they went to hell, and they were saying, oh, if Abraham, if you could just drop a drop of water on my tongue, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some people could take that and say, well, yeah, see, there's hell. It's eternal, and it's going on right now. Mm -hmm. But if you line up all the other stuff with hell in the Bible, you'll find that that wasn't talking about. It was totally talking about something totally different. Yeah, you got to keep it in context with yes. scripture. Yes, with the scripture. Exactly. So I'm going to ask another question here before we go to Sunday's lesson. The central issue, the central issue of the great controversy, mm-hmm. is it based on love or selfishness? <laughs> uh, well, both. The, the great controversy <laughs> is a mixture of both, right? Yeah, that's in that way. Yeah. It's the two well, sides. Yeah. yeah, it's the two sides. Um, not in a yin and yang sense, but in a in a uh, black and white. Maybe. And and Jeff is with us this morning. Good morning, Jeff. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, Jeff. Um, Satan is representing the selfishness. God is representing the love, and so that that makes up that that controversy. You know, it says that the old Chinese proverb we say this all the time: every man is made up of two dogs. You have those, you know, that voice of conscience in your mind. But then you have that little wild side too, and whatever. It's a battle. It's a it's a war. Yeah. It's yeah. a war between good and evil inside of us, and then it's pulling us one direction and the other direction. And the whole controversy is to find out. The whole controversy is really seeing the character of God and seeing the character of Satan, mm-hmm. and that's what the whole thing is playing out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And unfortunately, we're inside that war too. You know what I mean? And we're getting torn. Yeah. Wh- which which side are we going to take? Right. So there's an interesting question uh, um, in the first uh, Sabbath reading that comes up in kind of in the background. Why does Satan depend on deception to get people to follow him? Because if you told the truth, yeah. no one would. <laughs> yeah, they would be off. <laughs> I mean, uh, are, are human beings still, you know, uh, Edenic, if you want to call it that, um, to the point where it's all about the only way to get you is deception because you're not going to let go of what you have? Well, I think humans are, they, they'd rather hear what they want to hear rather than the truth in the first place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Flattery. You know, uh, that's mm-hmm. that's lying in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the main deception that we're worried about here in the in the end time? Is the main deception is to say that God's commandments don't matter anymore. Mm-hmm. We're saved by grace. You know what I mean? Not by the law. The law is made void. Well, mm-hmm. from the beginning, Satan has been calling God the liar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So we need to, that's what this controversy is about, is, is, to, is, is to know without a doubt who the liar is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think. Amen. You're awful quiet over there, Ben. He looks like he's kind of still sleeping a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, is it Ben or Benjamin? Uh, Benjamin, but people call me Ben. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you start tilting one way or the other, you can get a hunk of rope and tie him to his chair. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Well, there's lots of deception. That's um, I, something that I've always uh, talked about in group or wherever I am. Um, that's the only way that he can get people to follow him is d- to deceive them. And that uh, Jesus uh, will double up on that and say, yeah, that's right. Look at all of the, uh, the places in the, in the Bible where it says, beware of uh, in the last days that all the deception that's going to occur. You, you see that word all through the, all through the uh, Bible is deception, deception, deception. Mm-hmm. How do you keep from being deceived? You have to keep, uh, you have to trust in the Lord, keep your eyes on him, and keep your, 
keep yourself in his word. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, be protected from being deceived without reading the scriptures? I, I don't know. With God, all things are possible, but I don't think it's a wise thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figure that uh, if you don't know the Bible... You're uh, going to be you, easily, you're, yeah. You're uh, toast when it comes down to deception. You are, because, yeah, you are. Yeah. That That's the main thing. I wanted to say hi to, to Aaron real quick. Good morning, Aaron. Happy Sabbath. He says, nice backdrop. So we got some feedback on the backdrop. You made a wise choice. I made a wise choice. <laughs> what do you guys think of the backdrop? Well, you, we could hardly see it. but yeah, Well, it I mean, it's a little fuzzy up on the screen. but it. No, yeah. I think it looks good. Yeah. yeah. Are those little clouds or something? Or yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of Montana-y. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you scroll up to Watchman's comment there? I wanted to get the one. He says, Galatians 5.19, the acts of sinful nature, obvious sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and factions. Now, I, th I think he's going off of the, you know, the differences in doctrines versus, you know, living a sinless life, you know. Um, but, uh, and, and Aaron says, you keep the commandments of God and have the faith in Jesus to keep from being deceived. Amen. I love that. That was awesome, Aaron. <laughs> That was awesome. Amen. In a nutshell, that's what we're told in Revelations. <laughs> yes. I interrupted you. You were going to say something, but did you forget? No, as I, 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 <clears throat> I believe the Holy Spirit has a, a lot to do with that. Of yeah. course. Of course. Uh, it has a lot to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> you can read the Bible, but you will not understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. Uh, you need an interpreter of what the truth is to know what the truth is. That's true. That's true. You got to identify it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So um, as I mentioned last week, last time I uh, lectured, uh, well, took the the lead on the on the lesson. There's um, a deficit of information that we don't get to pretty much uh, because we we get so involved in the conversation about it. Uh, so I mentioned last time well, I'm going to try to do 10 minutes per page on the on the uh, lesson. So uh, we're going to pop over to Sunday and start our 10 minute section there. Um, a broken hearted savior. What broke this savior's heart overall in this great controversy? Uh, well, a lot of things have broken his heart. I mean, the fact that we have rejected him for one. Um, that his children rejected him. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. that's no. total right there. Everybody with children knows what that feels like. You know, it's a terrible feeling. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Yeah, yeah. And received I think what really not, broke yeah. his heart, for you know, like really, really broke his heart, was the separation between him and his father at the cross. You know, when he, when he uh, bore the sins of mankind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's on the mountain overlooking the. Uh, temple and he cried he wept over jerusalem, jerusalem yeah. why i mean you know he he you would think he's got all the information the nothing's new to him he knows what's going to happen he knows he's watching satan do all the stuff and yet but wait this he came in, a, in in a in a human form so he didn't know exactly what was going to happen that's why the separation on the cross was such yeah. was so great for him because he didn't know well oh, that like. if he was going to if he was going he to had faith he had yeah, faith yeah, that's yeah. correct that's correct but I, he didn't know yeah he didn't know if he was going to come he back thought he was it. going to be separated yeah. from the father forever forever right? yeah and he was yeah. still willing to do it's, that it's, yeah. it's the, it's for the, us it's what happens in us when also, because we don't know if our sins are all forgiven. Uh, yeah. We don't know if we're doing exactly what the Holy Spirit would want us to do or what God would want us to do. Mm -hmm. We won't know that until the time comes where he reveals everything to us and we stand before him. Imagine that, because we were talking about the love of God. Mm -hmm. That's all we really know about God is his love, right? Because that's what he's really focused on showing mankind through the whole history of, you know, throughout the whole history of mankind, through, you know, in the Bible as it, as it is. It, that's what he's really tried to expound upon is his character to mankind. That's what he's trying to give us. 
but imagine, would you die for me? I mean, maybe, right? I, maybe. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, but, I don't know. I could say anything, but who knows, you know, until the Well, let's, let's say Ben's willing to die for me, and, and he knows that he's going to be resurrected, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he has that hope, that promise. Would you die for me if you knew that you're going to be lost forever and ever and ever and never come back or return? <laughs> well, I would definitely hesitate, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, a God that was willing to die for mankind, an eternally existent God willing to give up everything. I think we miss that part. And the thing of it is, Carrie, too, I think we miss the part that we don't know what truly separation from the Father is. It's only the lost when the time of their final judgment is done that they feel and they realize what they lost and they feel the agony, the separation from the Father. We are under His grace right now, so even everyone is. So we don't, we don't feel no separation because we're under His grace. We don't feel like that we're lost, you know what I mean? We feel we're safe. Mm -hmm. yeah, because there's nothing that we could do that would separate Him from us as deep as we might go into sin. He's still there yes. with the Holy Spirit striving yes. for us. And so there's always a little bit of hope. Th there is well, hope. Yeah, and I think that comes back to, you know, like his word and doctrine and stuff like that. Because uh, something I've heard people say is G uh, feelings aren't Lord Jesus's. And often people will take their feelings and their situation and be like, oh, man, I feel lost or I feel this big disconnect with God. And it's like, well, what does the word say about it? Because that's the truth, not what you feel, you yeah. know, not what you think, um, not what your situation says. Um, and so the only option there, if you want to go that route, is to have faith in what he says, to trust in it and know that he is there. Okay. Okay. Just, I got one question, though. Okay. Uh, me and Jeff talked about this or whatever. Can you have feelings? I mean, because can you have feelings? What do you mean by can you? Like, I mean that the is Lord it, is with you and that. Oh, can you feel that? Yeah. I mean, is it bad uh, to feel that? Well, or if, okay. is it because I, I can feel that? You know what I mean? And I think I think your feelings, even the positive, you know, oh, I feel like God is with us right now. Like, <clears throat> I don't think you can use your feelings as a gauge no, to no, determine no, anything no, with God. Like, no, no. So it's like if but, but you can have the feelings, right? And the, yeah, you know you can, that they're can, from God, right? Yeah, you can feel positive, and it can de it's a blessing from God, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. It's not a barometer to tell you, like, the state of things, you know? Yeah, because <laughs> you, too, you have experience with someone, you, 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 you have feelings, right? Mm -hmm. Right? That's part of the human experience, yeah. Exactly. Sure. Okay. Let's go over uh, Sorry, Paul. to, <laughs> oh, no, that's good. Uh, it's, it's leading into the verse here, Luke 19. Somebody uh, look up uh, Luke 19, 41 through 44, and it gives uh, kind of a description of somebody who can see the future. He's, Jesus was a prophet. He could see the future, and it had a bearing on how he felt from day to day. I mean, he could take a look at the situation and, and know what was going on between Satan and and uh, his people between Satan and him. He knew Satan was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. Okay? But let's read this, 41 through 44. All right, I guess I will. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. That was Jesus. And that was Jesus saying, If thou hast known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which be belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy, thy, thine eyes. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. For the day shall come upon thee that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee around and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitations. Okay, so he's talking about Israel. Israel's rejecting him. Is that going on today? This very situation? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Now, Jesus right now is in the uh, sanctuary of heaven. Yeah. He's going through the judgment since 1844. It's been going on. Yeah. And does he re-feel these feelings 
for our generation as he's going through this judgment? Of course judgment? he does. Of well, course he's in he the does. most holy place, so he's basically reliving everybody's life. Mm-hmm. And, every, and, and everybody's life is filled with sin, and he's going through everyone's sin mm-hmm. and, and, and making a judgment on us. So of course, yeah, I believe, yes, very much so. Okay. And the Lord, he feels what we're even going through. What Satan is torturing with us with or anything, the problems in our life, he feels the pain that we feel. There's not any pain that we have had that he hasn't endured. Mm-hmm. Amen. Benjamin? I, yeah, I actually just kind of have a question. I've been thinking about it here for a few minutes, and um, so I figured I'd ask. Uh, where in Scripture does it mention Jesus um, or, like, false prophets, like um, like false Christs? Uh, you Matthew know, like, 24. Is that what it is? Like, um, yeah. People will say Jesus shall is, come in my name, saying no, that not, I am Christ. Not, well, maybe where it says that, like, Jesus will be here, but don't go. Yeah, yeah Matthew, Matthew 24. Matthew 24? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, yeah. Uh, five. And, and real quick, I wanted to hit on Watchman. Uh, he says, um, here, scroll up. No, not Watchman, but uh, Jeff. Uh, Exodus 20.10 says, We are not to make our feelings a test by which to discern whether we are in or out of favor with Five, God, three. whether they be what we consider encouraging or not. And that's a good that's a good point. We live by faith, not by feelings. I know, but we can have but, feelings because we but, have but, but this discussion. But that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. But, but it's good to mention that. Yeah. It's good to mention that, that. That, no, feelings is not a test of our No, of, of faith, our faith. We have to go by the word and they have to... Regardless of how we feel. Yeah, regardless yeah. of how... we're going to feel we, pretty much down. But, 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 but we can actually have a feeling, though, can't yeah. we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, mean, that's what I'm trying we to say. We were made with feelings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus is doing it right here in, in yeah. verse 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept yes. over it. Yeah. You know, he knew what was going to happen. Yeah. 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 Aaron says something interesting. Ambiguity was intentionally put in the Bible for the purpose of division. That division has spared Christianity from being co-opted until the time is right, I think. What do you guys think about that? That's, well, an, in, that's an interesting statement. Yeah, I think that falls along the line of why Christ used parables, right, to kind of those who, like, are impressed and desire to understand can, but those who stand in opposition to it um, oh. aren't really able to say, well, you said explicitly this, therefore. It's like Because he, he didn't say it explicitly. It That's was, a good point. It man. is a good point. Well, it's like when he talks about seeing, but they see but not. they see not, they hearing, hearing they can't they hear. hear not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right there. there it You're is. thirsty. It, but you're not really thirsty. Exactly. <laughs> and that would be that would go with like Thessalonians where it talks about where they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Mm-hmm. So by their own decisions, they they Yeah. They can't yeah he also them. says some of the parts is greater than the whole, which I think is interesting as well, because it you can't just like jump in and look at a verse and be like, see right here. You can use it you can use a verse to prove your point. If your point is completely off base, if all you're taking into consideration is one particular verse and probably in one particular translation, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Did not Satan do that to Jesus? Yeah. Uh, after 40 days of, of fasting? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he used scripture to, tr- to try and like. But he twisted Snag it. Him. Yeah, he twisted yeah. it, exactly. So you read uh, it out of context. So, mm-hmm. so I wanted to say hi to Miko real quick. Miko's with us. And, um, hey, I, got Miko. Your, and I got your message. Uh, uh, about the sound we've been working on the sound for a long long time trying to get the volume up but when we do that it seems to distort so maybe some new some new hardware or something is what we're looking at maybe so to our, kind of our, boost our, it a little bit better or I, I i just don't have the i don't have the technology i mean if somebody out there has a technology i'd love for them to kind of like maybe i don't share know last sabbath when i when i watched you guys it sounded great well, Miko Except tries to turn us up on the phone to listen to us when he's in the greenhouse. Uh-huh. And so, and he says he has a hard time hearing us. And I noticed we're kind of a little bit quiet, too. Scroll up to it. There's Get a new, some speakers there's, there's for a your phone. There's a new person in the comment <coughs> section I wanted to. S. West. Yes, because there's nothing new under the sun, and it's talking about Israel today because Israel's still scattered and lost and haven't returned to the rightful place. Well, this is, uh, we have this discussion a lot, uh, S. S. West. Um, or let's we'll just call you West. Um because, uh, and, and we as a Seventh-day Adventist, we believe that Israel, 
the body of Israel is those who are faithful to Christ. Yep. Spiritual Israel. Spiritual Israel. Well, and it, it, it would be literal Israel, too, because that was the name given to the people who wore... It's to whoever accepts faithful. Christ. It was who, that. Who, was whoever that accepts Christ. It was that simple. Yeah. And if you reject Christ, then, then, yeah, then you're of your father the Because he's the only way. Yes. He's the only way. And then uh, Wes says, yeah, but we may have feelings, but God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. Mm-hmm. Uh... uh, uh and I think he mis- misprinted that. Not our ways, dairy the Lord. You guys think of what he might have said. Anyways, we'll get we'll get to some of that maybe. But okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, t- Paul. Yeah, time's <laughs> passing us by. That's okay. No, I love the uh, the conversation. Um, Sunday's lesson is called a broken-hearted savior, and basically his children wouldn't listen to him. They reject him. They rejected him. He knew that uh, he would have to leave the sheep in a little while and uh, that the um, wolf would come in amongst them and take them and scatter the sheep, the, the um, family of God. And uh, it just broke his heart that it was going to happen. Let's look at uh, some of what um, Carrie was talking about in chapter 24 of Matthew. And... Um, it's interesting, you're getting all of this information from Jesus that's uh, telling you uh, how to get ready for, um, you know, the last, their day, okay, because uh, Titus hadn't arrived on the scene and the destruction of Jerusalem was still pending. But in the lesson, and it's really neat, uh, this whole chapter 24 basically is a mirror image, not only of the past, but of the future, mm. our time. Amen. Okay. So um, let's read a few verses out of 24, get some context, and then discuss it uh, as it applies to our day and age. Uh, who wants to read um, 15 through 20? Matthew 24, 15 through 20? Mm-hmm. I can do it. <clears throat> so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Oh, shoot. What was I supposed to read? Yeah, yeah, till 15. 25. Oh, through 25? Okay. Or 20, sorry. Okay. Let him who is on the, the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not return to take his clothes. Woe to those who are with child and those who nurse in those days. Pray that your escape will, be, will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. I always love that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on the Sabbath. If Jesus, okay, for the <laughs> resurrection on Sunday, if he rose from the grave and the Sabbath was changed, how come he Special said that 70 years the after his death, yeah. <laughs> you know, he says, pray that it be not well, in the winter or on the Sabbath. Well, people would say that that. It's Sunday now. Well, no, uh, people would say that this prophecy is only for. Um, Jews or something. Yeah, for when um, Jerusalem gets destroyed. Huh. And then they would say it doesn't apply to today, obviously, because Sunday is the right day, you know. But it was 70 <laughs> years, I mean, 70 years after he died already. Yeah, well, the Pope didn't change it until many years after that. I know. 338 AD. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so that makes Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Susan says, Jesus knew that Jerusalem, the people of Israel, had rejected everything and what was going to happen. In other words, otherwise there was no going back. Okay. Yeah. Rejected. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, so that's Sunday. Uh, the idea is is um, Jesus was giving a prophecy of what was going to happen to um, Jerusalem in you know the next I don't know if it was months or, or years, but in in the near future at that time, and it just broke his heart that he saw his children. I mean, blood was running down the the steps of the temple uh, for all of the people that were uh, murdered, killed Mm -hmm. by the Romans. And uh, it was just terrible for him to to see that. And uh, now he's in the uh, temple of uh, heaven getting ready to to, uh, finish up the uh, judgment of humanity and bring this whole great controversy to an end. And yet even there is an application to the last days of the same thing that happened in Jerusalem, the destruction, the people who uh, lost their way, the, the um, number of people that were killed by Satan and his followers now. 
Mm-hmm. So he's given, he's give, he, went, he was going through it here, and now he's going through it again now. Yeah. So uh, brokenhearted Savior uh, was probably a, a good term for Sunday's lesson title. His children just won't listen. Okay. All right, well, let's go to uh, Monday. Lisa, back up real quick to Miko's uh, comment there. That was an interesting, too. Uh, Miko says, in the last day, God will give heresies to be preached in the churches to be the, a test. If you are a true, if you, you, if you're true and check the Bible, will save. But if you follow pastors or preachers, you will be lost. Amen. Amen. I love that. I love that, Miko. Very well said, awesome. Miko. Very well said. We have to follow what the Bible says. Thus saith the Lord. And thus saith if it. you guys hear us say something stupid, test li- it. <laughs> test it. Go to the Bible. Refute it. You know, that's why we have an open discussion. We're not afraid yeah. Yeah. of people disagreeing with us. And we're and no experts by any means. No, we are not theologians. <laughs> we're just construction workers. <laughs> yeah. That's it, except for Paul here. He's yeah, a professional. He's a <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm learning as we go. <laughs> okay, so Monday's lesson. Uh, the title of it is Christians Providentially Preserved. Uh, of course, uh, providentially, I don't know how often you come across that term, but <laughs> what does it mean? Providentially. Oh, you're going to throw a big word at me now, huh, Paul? Yeah, I look them up, man, because sometimes I get lost if I don't. Um, It sounds like uh, something that was meant to happen. Yeah, Uh, resulting from God's intervention, providence. Mm. Mm. So God is uh, has an intervention uh, purpose in all of what's happening, not only back then, but now. And uh, let me read this first part here. God's mercy, grace, providence... Okay, there's that word again. And foreknowledge are clearly revealed in the events leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay. Can you apply that to today's age and how does that work? God's telling today's age what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Had Ellen White write the book, The Great Controversy. Mm-hmm. I want everybody in the, in the world to understand that there is a war going on between Satan and his followers on this planet and my people, speaking of Jesus' people. And I loved how you said that with Ellen White because it's like nothing ever happens, right, Until unless he reveals it unto his, his servants. Mm-hmm. And Ellen White exactly is for our day. It is for our day. Mm-hmm. And that we wouldn't stumble and that we would see the snares of Satan. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's read Psalms 46.1 and uh, get an idea of providence again. Um, Providence means resulting from God's intervention. Okay. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Do you feel God's refuge and uh, strength status? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I felt God's protection this week in a big, big way. See, you felt it, though. <laughs> you can't feel oh, it. Oh, i seen it, too. <laughs> no, 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 no. I see where you're going with this. Mm-hmm. Listen, feelings are a very important part of the makeup of humans. Yeah. Jesus wept. I know. He did. He I did. don't believe he feelings are bad by any means. No, compassion. feelings are not bad, yeah. but we can't trust our no, feelings we can't to trust lead us no. in this direction no. or this direction. No, because feelings are reactionary. You saw God's providence, therefore you felt. Thank you. Like that's better. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, that's beautiful, make, beautiful. Yeah. Said it better Thank you, than I could. <laughs> he knows me better than me. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> He's been feeling you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be t- tears of joy in heaven. Yes, <laughs> okay, of course. Well, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's read Isaiah 41:10 along those same lines. Who's got Isaiah 41:10? Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Okay. Amen. So I, I, I just want to add, um, I keep this because uh, this is Hebrew for Benjamin is son of my right hand. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And it has Isaiah 41.10. You knew that. Knew that. Mm-hmm. That's how you, why you were named it, right? Well, I don't know if my parents thought that deep into oh. it, but... Oh. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, but it is a, it's a good reminder for me. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. I'll, just like my name, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Means <laughs> means small one. 
And you know the coincidence <laughs> of <she's> humble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the coincidence of, of of my life is that just about everybody that I am very good friends with is has a biblical name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like my best friend for like twenty plus years is Nathan. <laughs> my twin brother was Nathan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I named my kids after chewing tobacco. I know you did. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. this is kind One of a... guy's s- name's Jack and the other guy's named Dan. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is kind Not of a, that bad. No. <laughs> this is kind of a side tangent, the whole naming of kids, but um, I was out playing softball with the academy students and um, I was looking at all the bats. All the bats just have fantastic names for young boys, like Easton and... Um, well, maybe oh. not Sprawling. I don't know if I'd call my kid Sprawling, but I was just like looking at all these bats. I was like, man, if I need a, a child name for a boy, I'm just going to go to the batting section of the sporting goods store. Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. Wilson. The, the little slugger. <laughs> the little that, was my, that was my favorite bat. The, no, it was the big slugger, the little slugger. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. What does that say? The verse you'll not hear in the church. Ooh. Oh, uh, it was Joe Biden's new campaign. Wow. Come on, Paul. There's a quiet spot. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just listening and looking at the same time here. Let's look down at the bottom of uh, Monday's lesson. Uh, Monday's lesson, again, is ent- entitled Christians Providentially Preserved. Let's look at Hebrews 11, 35 through 38. Hebrews 11, 35 through 38. Yeah. There we go. Got that? Yeah. Might as well go ahead and read it, Paul. Women received their dead race to life again. Wait a second. I want to make sure I've got the right one. Yeah. Here, that's yeah. that's the right one. Yeah. And it's 11, 35, <laughs> yep. that's okay. the right one. Okay. All right. So this is pro- providential care of God. Women received their dead race to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, talking about the early Christians, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Why does God put his people through this? I mean, he could take it away from so that they have, don't have to go through it, but he wants to, you to go through that. I'm, I'm thinking he's thinking to himself, I went through it. Okay. Well, but I want, I want a certain population of the, of the earth, the Christians, to know that experience. Well, f- first of all, he doesn't, he doesn't allow people to go through it alone. No. These people couldn't have endured these things by, by themselves. themselves uh. You know, so the Spirit of God was definitely with them. And many of them were singing hymns as the flames were actually burning them to death. Um, and so th- there's, w- which they said the death of martyrs in the Fox's Book of Martyrs, it said the death of the martyrs was seed for, for new converts. They grew because they seen their faith, that they had no fear. You know what I mean? It, it was like... It was so valiant. It was so, like... Like that was the absolute greatest way to honor die. the greatest honor the greatest you could honor. have. And when people saw that, they're like, I want to die like that. Yeah. I want people to look at me die with this kind of honor. Yeah. I mean, that was their mentality back then. Go ahead. You're, you're fixing to say something. Yeah, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> He's still for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then. So it's for protection. Because as a child, I would see a red hot stove. And I'd be like, oh, that looks cool. Let me go touch it. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> 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 like Until a to a I light. actually touched that thing, did I not know that I really didn't want to touch it, no matter how many people told me that that pretty thing <laughs> was hot and would hurt me. <laughs> I didn't know until I touched it. But you had a cool, you had a cool 
scar on your hand or a bro, bird. Look at my hand. <laughs> I have scars all over my hands. Silver lining. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we kind of learn. So yeah. I, I was thinking of the movie Bugs Life. He's mm -hmm. like, Harry, don't look at the light. He's like, oh, I can't help it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> uh, crazy. Uh, that was funny. Okay. So uh, down at the bottom here, uh, it says, uh, as a quote out of The Great Controversy, uh, written by Ellen White, um, in vain, quote unquote, uh, were Satan's efforts to destroy the earth of Christ by violence. Huh. Yeah, the Christian church is still around, even though they burned them in the Colosseum to, you know, light up the place so that they could watch other people die. The great controversy in which the disciples of Jesus yielded up their lives did not cease when these faithful standard bearers fell at their post. What did um, they said, Bebe? The the um, blood of martyrs is the seed for new converts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. By defeat they conquered. God's workmen were slain, but his work went steadily forward. So you've got these people not willing to give up their faith. You've got these people being tortured and killed um, with uh, un. Un, uh, unhuman me means of you know getting rid of them satan is just going out of his mind watching the whole thing he he knows he's losing mm -hmm. so you know the only thing that he's uh, got is physical uh, pain and and uh, torture at that time to do to these people and people are stand christians are standing in line it'll be my turn next it'll be my turn next how do you live through that? Be, being a Christian? Because it's going to happen in these last days. You're going to come to the point where you got to make up your mind which way you're going to go. I think you need to have that walk with the Lord, that, that, that close walk with the Lord, the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. Mm -hmm. And and wanting to wanting to like be like Jesus. And what he did for us and the pain and the suffering he went through. He says he's with us always. Always. The promises of God is how we get through this. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's when, when, when your foundation is built on the promises of God, you have that relationship with Christ. Like, he doesn't just drop a, I mean, sometimes he does, I guess. But, uh, like, I haven't experienced that yet. Why? Because I think God's preparing me, right? Um, if we're, if you exist on this planet still, God is still working on you. You are not there yet. Amen. 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 But the thing is that when it comes to how to go through this kind of, that kind of persecution, it's like you will be ready. You will be like Christ and you will walk in his footsteps. You will be, he will prepare you to drink that cup that he drank. Um, but we can't do it on our own. No, it's not something I don't think we can do at all. I think it's almost like we focus on our relationship with God and the scriptures, and he makes it happen. Yeah. It's not something I think we need to worry about. I think it's it's a byproduct of of our relationship with Jesus. By beholding, we become changed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right Amen. there. Yeah. Perfect. It, okay. it, and, and faith is is a process of our, our will submitting to God's will. Um, Watchman says, life is about endurance and refining. The more you know, the more responsibility you have. So that's true, is, that's, too. That's another true yeah. statement. Mm -hmm. so. so remember the uh, people in the past that uh, had providentially been preserved by God's intervention. Yeah. Okay, and, and he's going to do the same thing for us. Oh, absolutely. In the last days. Uh, let's go to Tuesday's lesson, Fa and it's called Faithful Amid Persecution. Uh, why persecution? Because like what Watchman... It, it purifies us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it pulls out all, all the dross. It shows our true character. It helps us to become like Christ. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is a purification process. I mean, I remember, you know, when trials used to come to me, it was always why, why, why? You know, I'm supposed I'm supposed to be a child of God. This isn't supposed to be I happening. Know. <laughs> you know, and it's just it's such. A if you're a child of God, that's going to happen. You better expect <laughs> I mean. it. You better expect. Well, I'm I'm a little more mature now, so when trials come. I, I tend to kind of, okay, Lord, what is there you need to show me? You know, obviously, 
that trial there revealed some of my character, so we're going to start with that right there, you know? Okay, so <coughs> this guy, you know, gave me the 10 second horn honk, which is like my pet peeve. Like when you're driving around and you, <laughs> me, <laughs> you know, it's it's just like, you know, you're stupid, you're an idiot, you're, you're retarded, blah, 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 honk. They're just looking at you, you know? And I was like, oh, I get so mad. That's you just know? your feelings. Yeah, though. I know, right? <laughs> I, 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 always, I always give them, whenever someone gets mad at me in traffic and I'm like, like, I'm always, I always give them the nana nana boo boo then. <laughs> That's what I always do. Like, even if I'm mad, I just play it off like it's just a nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you ever think about praying for him? Exactly. <laughs> well, that's where God wants me to wind up. Yeah. yeah. And I know that for a fact. That's 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 the end result of his character in yeah. me. Yep. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I know it's not perfected yet because I still react to it. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. whatever you react to, that's what Satan's going to come at you with all the time. Mm -hmm. Does prayer neutralize Satan? Of course. In what way? It doesn't even neutralize him. It, he flees from it. Exactly. Right there. He flees uh, from it. And then... Mm -hmm. and, I had something to say with the, the the trials and the tribulations. Instead of seeing them as that, it's shouldn't we be here? Am I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he needs he's looking for people, and, and especially now, to to step into that place of yes. here am I. Send me. Send me. Send me. <laughs> well, I guess I kind of have a question. Like in that in that example, right? That someone gets mad and they honk. Right. Um, like what does why like why would we why would we pray for them? And I'm not I'm not I, like I prayer is like good and it's for the other person. Right. But it's for us, too. And it, and it definitely is for us. Yeah. It definitely is for us. Um, but like. I guess maybe I need to think. Maybe about you this should more. look at it as in the prayer sense as. Not that they have a problem with the honking, mm -hmm. but maybe they have something going on in their life that is precedence yes, yeah. to them. Like maybe they're honking the horn because they're trying to get to the hospital or, or you know. Yeah. Uh, they got a sick And Carrie's being they're, an they're, idiot uh, and yeah. on his phone while <laughs> the light is green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, get out of my way! I need to get to the hospital right now. Yeah, you never it's, know. I guess. Yeah, more <laughs> empathy for the for your fellow man than they're doing something wrong against you. Yeah. Well, they're, it, they're just. I'll get the yes, and then yeah, you go can, ahead. Doesn't the Bible say pray for those who despitefully use yeah. you? Yeah, you know, it's totally. Okay, mm. so praying for somebody who just flipped you off or whatever it might be yeah. on the free on the freeway oh. is well, and the and way to go. And Ben made a good point. It, and. It, it's obviously something that, that is revealing some hurt or condition in their heart that they're suffering from, right? Yeah. I mean, their husband hates them, their wife hates them, their kids are acting out, something, something. I mean, they're, they're, their friends are sick. There's something that's upset them that's, that, they're, that they're displaying now in mm -hmm. other ways. How about yeah. your insecurity, which chaps you? Yeah. Well, well <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's two that's sides. Right. There's two sides there's two of this. Sides. Like. Like, sorry, care. <laughs> Just hey. if we like, we can we can pray for somebody, um, and and that's all good. That's kind of, and maybe not entirely, but it's almost kind of like passing the buck, or um, kind of like saying, like removing yourself from like being an an actual part, like. Okay, the point I'm trying, I guess I'm trying to ultimately get to is like, I think there's also that how we react to it. Yeah, of course. Yes, of course. Right, it's like that's that. that's really impactful. And if we react negatively, but we just continue to pray for other people. We like, need to be praying for ourselves. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we should probably like pray for our own hearts yeah. to change because. Amen, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, because our, our reaction to something is often such a huge witness. It is, yes. That's, that's key. Yeah. Who knows? Like, and this is what I fear now. I could react wrong to someone on the road. Yes, and someone else sees it. And they may walk through the yeah, church door that, that, that Sabbath, and you'd be like, Ooh. oh, I know you from somewhere. Don't, no, I don't think we know each other, do we? Didn't you flip no, me I've off? You <laughs> hey, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that sort of stuff happens. Yeah, um, of course it does. One time, uh, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe it? people honk because Kerry drives eight in a 35. <laughs> yeah, right. He hey. knows me. He knows me. There's nothing wrong with being a granny driver, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I totally drive like Grandpa. Um, Lisa, one time, we were driving down the road, <laughs> right? No, true story. We were in a pickup truck. We just bought our pickup truck. And she saw, she saw this guy pushing his motorcycle down the road. And he kind of turns around and he does this. And she goes, stop, stop, stop. The guy needs a ride. He needs a ride. And I'm like, we're late for church, Lisa. We got to get down there. They're going to be waiting. To, you know, we got to open it. We got to do this. We got to do that. So we pass this guy up. And she's oh. like, she's nagging at me the whole yeah. way to church. She's like, we should have stopped. For you, we should have stopped. Yeah. She's got a great wow. spiritual sense. Yeah. She really does. Mm -hmm. And no kidding. We go into the church. And this guy about 15 minutes oh. later about the time oh. it takes him to push his bike all the way to the church. Oh. he goes he goes and the first thing he does is point out he goes he goes hey you guys drove by me oh. <laughs> and lisa's like i told him i told him i told him to stop <laughs> okay and burn I was, I was burn flabbergasted. that yeah. would have been embarrassing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all the way down to the bottom of tuesday's lesson uh, along that same line carrie uh, it says, despite the devil's most vicious attacks, the Christian church grew rapidly. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about today? How, uh, how does that apply for today? I mean, are we growing rapidly? I think we need a little persecution. Yeah? <laughs> I really do. Well, sometimes persecution, we bring, bring it on ourselves. Like persecution, we think of like from an outside source. And there is that. But there's also like the consequences of our actions, the consequences of the path where we are, we're, tr we're walking on. Right. And so times, at times we can feel persecution, not realizing that it's because of us, because of kind of the spirit we're carrying or the decisions we're making that other people are reacting a certain way. Right. Like we think that we're being persecuted when really we're bringing it on unknowingly. And I think yeah. that's why that praying for ourselves or praying for our own hearts and coming to Christ and asking for a change is super important. And mm -hmm. that change could come through the test. But yeah, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying is the persecution, regardless of whether it's because of you. Whether you do good or evil, there's you're going to be persecuted. Yeah. Right? And both. You might as well choose good. <laughs> yeah, and, and when, well, and when following Christ, if you are a Christian and, and that's where your heart is and that's what you've decided, regardless of which kind of persecution you're going through, it is going to lead to yeah. growth. Amen. 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 Okay, Wednesday's lesson. Okay, right along with uh, what you were just saying, caring for the community, uh, you know, the guy along, along the side of the road with a motorbike. Yeah. Okay, Carry. caring for the community. <laughs> then down, to, down at the bottom it says, Jesus sends us out into a broken world as amb ambassadors for Christ to touch others with his love, New Testament Christianity was characterized by the Christians' love for one another and their communities. And it always reminds me, what is love? Uh, I learned this in Lossier while I was reading a book, Ann Kimmel, I'm Out to Change My World, okay? And she quoted this, uh, I'll quote her. She said, love is often something you do. Amen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it definitely is. I've always kept that in the back of my mind. Okay. Huh. You want to love somebody, do something for them. Yeah. Okay. And Jesus sends you out to a broken world to love that world in his name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, love is service. It's not a feeling. It's it's service. Yeah. 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 Amen. All right. So Thursday's can, lesson. You can have a feeling though, right? <laughs> but there's other words to describe that, like affection and passion. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We get your point, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, Come we on, get Ricky. your point. Yeah, feelings are important, right? I mean, you know, I, I know when my my wife and I we first fell in love with each other. Yeah, you had a like, feeling. Right? It was just like it was it was all emotion, all feeling. But when that feeling goes away one day, we don't just suddenly say to each other, "Well, I guess we're out of love, so we got to go our separate ways." Yeah. No, we keep you know? working at it. We keep working at it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to make a big dive for the finish line here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good visual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but first on Thursday, just uh, read for yourself uh, John 13, 35 and 1 John 4, 21. Mm. That's in context with a legacy of love. Okay. And uh, love was the norm of Christian communities in the first few centuries. Is it still? 
should be. Okay. okay. Well, I've I've seen it. I've seen it in our church here. I've seen it. Yeah, I have abroad. too in my in yeah, this yeah. church too. I mean, love does exist, and um, and what does the Bible say? Whatever's good, whatever whatever is lovely, whatsoever is, you know, those things that are what we should focus on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should dwell on those things. And that means I think the church, too, you know, we can focus on the bad. Yeah. Oh, this guy over here, this guy, you know, he did that. I saw him drink a Dr. Pepper, blah, 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 this, <laughs> you know. And we could get all wrapped up in that business. Or we could say. Is that love? It's not love. Yeah. It's not. It's it's being critical, and it's that's what Satan is. Yeah. Satan points out our faults. Yeah. Amen. Okay, yeah. let me read the um, quote out of the Great Controversy, and we'll uh, close for this lesson study. Uh, it's in the back of the uh, lesson, so on Friday's reading. The mysterious providence which permits the righteous to suffer persecution at the hand of the wicked has been a cause of great per- uh, complex- perplexity excuse me, to many who are weak in faith. Some are even ready to cast away their confidence in God because he suffers the basest of men to prosper, while the best and purest are afflicted and tormented by their cruel power. How it is asked, can one who is just and merciful and who is also infinite in power tolerate such injustice and oppression? This is a question with which we have nothing to do. Amen. Okay. God (laughs) has given us sufficient evidence of his love, and we are not to doubt his goodness because we cannot understand the workings of his providence. Amen. Amen. I love Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Focus on the good side. Mm-hmm. of things instead of the negative side. That my wife tells me that all the time. <laughs> Quit talking about the negative side of it. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. So um, this is interesting uh, lesson. Uh, always a, a little interesting to try to, um, to uh, teach, but uh, the great controversy is going on. We're living it, and it's going to come to an end here pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Love your neighbor while there's still time. Yeah. Love. Yeah. Love your neighbor like you would love yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And let's read a couple of these comments. Uh, Can you scroll up a little bit just just as we close here for this Sabbath school? Um, Read up. Go up one more. Uh, Okay, Watchman says, looking at a great falling away rather than a great revival. Miko, one more above that is uh, Miko. He says, we grow rapid. We are growing rapidly, but not in North America and Europe. Meaning oh. the church. Oh. Not in Babylon, we don't yeah. grow. Yeah, so, okay, go ahead and scroll <laughs> down. I believe that we are seeing curses for the actions, Deuteronomy 28, 28. Likely to be a busy week. Stay strong, avoid getting entangled in what you know is wrong, and God bless. Good advice from the watchman. Big Sky Argonauts, Aaron says, the nations are judged, the people suffer the consequences. Good news is the righteousness are usually spared. Still punishment, but left alive. Okay, God gave a path for the Hebrews. Let him give us a path for Babylon. Yeah. All right. So because God's people are still in Babylon, Mm -hmm. because it tells us in Revelation, come out of her, my people. Mm Yeah. All right. So let's continue to pray for our brothers and sisters. Uh, If you guys have any special prayer requests, please send them to prophecymontana at gmail.com or put them in the comments if you don't mind other people reading them and perhaps joining in the prayer as well. Mm -hmm. And please pray for us. We're uh, we're working hard. Uh, The church is working hard to go live on radio. Radio, It's going to be Radio 74 right here in Bozeman. Mm. And so we're going to have some live programming, which we never had before, mm-hmm. and possibly in Missoula as well, for starters, and maybe even maybe even more. So, please pray for that. Please pray for this ministry, folks. Uh, the Satan Satan is always attacking us. He's always uh, trying to you know disrupt things, and um, but we know it, he, he's ultimately not going to win. That Jesus has already won the battle. This is a serpent that's missing its head. But the serpent is still very dangerous. Isn't he? He's not giving up. He's not giving up until he's gone. Yeah, yeah. He's got a crushed head, but he's still very dangerous. And yeah. so we have to stay, uh, stay vigilant, be sober uh, for our adversary. The devil is seeking about like a roaring lion. Mm-hmm. Please give us a thumbs up, folks. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Catch us every, catch us live every Sabbath, nine o'clock Mountain Time. God bless and thank you so much.